Go ahead, put it on real tight. I hope you brought your best tonight. They say they got the fireworks, yeah, they say they got the show. Here around the shoots, you're the best, so let's go. This is Texas Toast. I'm your host, Miss Helen. Kick back and enjoy as we toast the best from Texas. Toast. I'm Miss Helen, along with, I, I like it when I get to have multiple guests. And so I want to say hello and welcome to three members of the Ransom Brothers. I have Sean, Sal, and JT. Did I get all that right? Got it. So Good guys, time. it's so nice to have you on the podcast. We have a lot of music to talk about. And just let's just kind of do some band introduction first. How did all of you come together? Because I know there's a couple of other members of the band as well. But I have you three, which I'm thankful for. So let's, Sal, let's start with you. Talk about your part in the band and how y'all yeah. came together. So uh, Sean and I actually started this project um, I guess probably around three years ago, or maybe a little more than that, maybe three and a half years ago. Um, we met through a, a mutual friend we had at the time, and uh, we just started doing a acoustic little uh, open mic nights and stuff like that. And eventually, um, you know, Sean started sharing some of the stuff he was writing with me. And so I started learning that, and then I started coming up with stuff. And so we operated as a deal for a while before. Um, getting a rhythm section and eventually being like, man, we need a fiddle player. We need a key player. We need a third guitar player. So we just kept adding to the group. Uh -huh. And uh, our goal was always to have a big band. And so uh, that's what we managed to put together. So oh, y'all sound is amazing. So Sean, let's talk about you. Well, I, Sal, one other thing, where are you from? I am from Houston, Texas, originally. Cypress oh, area, Cypress. Area. Okay, cool. Kyle knows all about that area. It? Yeah, huh? I grew up in the Houston area, 50 miles west of Houston in Sealy. That's where my oh. hometown was. Yes. Okay, I know Sealy. <laughs> yes. So, Sean, tell me about you and your your part in the band. Um, I, uh, I'm our lead singer, um, and I... I would say I'm kind of one of our principal lyricists. That's that's kind of mine and Sal's contribution uh, for the most part is um, he and I write a lot of our lyrics and kind of core melodies when it comes to the the onset of of our songwriting. But I'm I'm kind of charged with more of the uh, like lyrical composition. Oh. Um, He's a man uh, behind it. I mean, as, as far as the lyrics, that's, that's just kind of, that's, that's the part I really harp on, but I mean, we all, um, we all are songwriters in the sense that like everybody, we don't go into the studio and it's not, it's not one guy saying like, Hey, everybody do this. It's all seven of us went into, uh, the studio and with, with a great producer like Corby Schaub, we were able to just be like, I want to do this, or this is my take on it, or this is how I want to compose it. And it all was a very, um free thinking uh free very creative process for all of us um but as as far as how sal and i met uh i had a co-worker uh that was sal's old roommate um and he and i worked at a, a tech company um like a recruiting company and there was a there's another co-worker that uh was like hey we're gonna start a band uh we heard you play guitar and i had just left a band as a guitar player um and i was like yeah, yeah I, I play a little guitar and so he's like come over after work we'll get a beer and we'll we'll jam and i get over there and uh sal had you know good gear and can play and i get over there with like my whole stage set up with my pedal board my guitar my amp and then sal and i hit it off like we were just immediately we were like oh dude you're cool i want to talk gear with you <laughs> and the, the guy that set up the whole thing was looking at us like well we'll hold on are we, are we starting a band? And Sal and I were like, we're starting a band. I don't know what you're going to do because you can't sing. <laughs> that is a great story. I, I love it. And so JT, first of all, on my notes, when I previewed the new album that's up and coming, all I could write was fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. You are amazing. Thank you. Yes. No, and it's, it's been such an awesome ride. Like, uh, being able to come in and then and then be a part of this project and then be able to put some fiddle right where it needs to be so it's it's I love doing it and it's it's been awesome 
And so, and now where are you from? So I grew up all up and down the East Coast. I lived a lot of my life in Philadelphia and then also uh, in the Florida, all, all up and down Florida. So I was there for all my childhood. And then I came out here to go to UT for college. And oh, I've cool. been in Texas ever since. Awesome. And Sean, I forgot to ask where you're from. I was, uh, my brother and I were both born in Leander uh, and we went to, we went to high school in like Cedar Park, Round Rock area. I went to Rouse High School. Nice. So you can tell I'm that small town Texas girl. Like, I know where are you from? <laughs> like yeah. where I grew up, it was like, who was your grandma? Who's your second cousin? Who's your great uncle? But anyway, so let's talk about, so this is how we pieced it together. How did you come up with the name, the Ransom Brothers? And y'all aren't brothers, right? <laughs> no, we are not. We do, just uh, in spirit. <laughs> we do uh, talk about making a shirt that says, so who are the brothers? Because we get asked that constantly. Um I'll let Sean talk about that a little bit, but I'll, uh, all I'll say is that before we were the Ransom Brothers, Sean and I operated under a different name um, called Good Springs, and uh, our producer at the time that helped us put our first four singles out was just like, so are you guys like set on Good Springs? And we were like, no, because everybody we've talked to has just been like, all right, that's a name, you know, like no excitement. So he told us to think about something with brothers just because at the time we were kind of going at it with this idea of a, of a duo, uh, you know, guitar duo. Mm -hmm. So um, anyways, I'll let Sean take it from there. Cause it was kind of his uh, brainstorming that led to that. So like, so we were, it was the middle of COVID. Um, <clears throat> we, we got lucky meeting Chris Beal, our first producer before all the, you know, everything hit the fan. And he's like a, a pretty involved producer and musician in Austin. And it was, we, we had jumped on a zoom with him being like, Hey, we want to start a, you know, we, we want to create some music. We want to go in the studio and record some of these songs. And we got lucky that him and Harmony Kelly, uh, Kenny Chesney's current bass player. Um, she, she helped out with that. Daniel James, a bunch of guys from the South Austin Moonlighters helped us with it. But um, we get, we get into the we get into the the pre-pro process and we're getting on zoom calls with him and he's like yeah guys good spring sucks um <laughs> what are we gonna do so i was like well, let's go home and talk about it and he gave us the whole brothers kind of notes and i went home and watched the man who shot liberty valance and uh jimmy stewart's character in that movie was ransom stoddard so i saw that word just kind of kept floating around in my head and i i called sal that night and Sal and I have been hanging out long enough to where like we have phone calls that sometimes are just like hey do you remember the cables yeah okay bye or he'll call me and be like hey like did you get the amp yeah okay bye and so it's not very detailed conversations and I call him and I'm like hey man what about the Ransom Brothers and he goes yeah yeah I like that I was like okay cool bye and so the next day um we get on a call with Chris and uh Sal looks at me right before we get in he's like so so the Ransom Brothers is that it I was like let's see how he likes it and then Chris we we said we're thinking about doing the Ransom Brothers and Chris Beal is just like yep he's like that's that's it he's like roll with that that's that's got y'all's vibe written all over it okay so let's talk about you had a couple of radio releases in front of Baby Doll which we're going to talk in 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 detail about uh talk of the town and why does it rain which really did good they stayed strong um radio you got some good spins but let's talk about your current release to radio which is baby doll which we talked about here on tech on uh, texas toast actually texas on tap but all i mean like going back well, sean when you're talking about the lyrics it's like with your songs i have you y'all have the kind of music that you just have to keep listening. You have to listen all the way to the end or you're going to miss something. But Baby Doll, there's so much description in there. One of the things that stood out to me was I'm still one, ever since the first time I heard the song, I still want a beer bottle chandelier. Tell me the story about Baby Doll. Is this a real place? I felt like I had been there, like I knew the people, like like I could almost like smell the place you're singing about. <laughs> so it was like, Baby Doll was something that I had like lyrically kind of just I was sitting working from home um, and I, I was supposed to be clearing out emails, but I had just this story, like this idea in my head. Um, and the, um, 
it started kind of with the girl being like she had an ivy tattoo wrapped around her wrist she looked damn good in those overalls i started with that and i was like okay well what are we doing like why why are you hanging out with her and i was like well, okay let's go let's back it up and then i started with like okay you're in a dive bar in a little southern town um it could be anywhere it could be georgia mississippi tennessee texas wherever um and just I try to kind of paint this picture of a very sort of like almost little feet or like black crows, kind of very sludgy Southern sound with a good story. And the beer bottle uh, chandelier and the Christmas tree covered in brassieres. I don't know why I thought of like when you're skiing and you're going uphill and you see like those trees that all the college kids throw bras on, like that's what kind of came to mind. Okay. Um, and I just, I was trying to capture a very dive bar feel um just because that's you know that's that's kind of our mo as a band any dive bar in austin that's well known or even like the ones that kind of are a little hole in the wall gyms like that's where you'll find us over the weekend um but i also like i guess the inspiration for kind of that groove was i was listening to up on cripple creek by the band and that kind of just very like smooth driving groove was just kind of in my head and I was like let's just get an acoustic guitar and thrash it out well it's it's definitely it's a it's an attention getting song and it's one that sticks with you and I think it's just it's just an indicator of what else y'all have to come now y'all do have an upcoming full album coming out resurgence which is releasing August 28th can I talk about some of those yeah songs because yeah. like every every time I heard one I kept I kept writing kept writing it down I think one night in Charlotte really caught my attention and JT your fiddle was so good on that what Thank you. I could see him smiling <laughs> I could I could I could hear him start smiling <laughs> yeah. yeah that is that has been like um and Sean and Sal and everybody in the band will tell you, like, that's been my favorite song since day one, even before we would even consider. It wasn't even supposed to be part of the, the record initially. Um, and then we cut one. And then I was like, hey, this sounds like One Night in Charlotte's going to have its uh, have its place after all. And um, that, that, like, I, I love that song. And it's, it's really, um, it's really been awesome to work with these guys and watched it evolve from what it once was yes well I loved that one I mean I loved all of them and I knew I couldn't like pick everything to talk about but enough but here's what I like about your music is you'll go like from one night in Charlotte and then like back to today and then the black flag song y'all have such a diversity with your music that's that's what I just I love it well thank you um yeah, I, I think a lot of that comes from our first producer that we worked with, Chris Beal. Um, he he told Sean and I one one time the song is in charge. And so we live by that. And so for a long time, you know, Sean and I would talk like, you know, what's it what's it gonna be? What's the sound? And I always went back to that. And I was like, dude, who cares if we have more of this country sound or if it's more of this rock sound? I was mm -hmm. like, if a song comes out that you've written and it's lyrically fantastic and we've got cool music behind it, who gives a crap if it sounds more country or if it's more rock and roll, just write the song, you know? And like prime example, like you're talking about one night in Charlotte, we, you know, Sean was just like, ah, just, he felt like writing a waltz. So he does. And we, you know, it was kind of, we, we will most of the time, like he said earlier, write the basis of it. But once we kind of had the group that we're playing with consistently now, which JT is a big part of, you know, we bring it to the group and then it's like, guys, what, what do y'all want to add to it? You know? So, you know, JT threw his fiddle line in there and that song just took on a completely different new life and, and excited everyone in a different way than it was before. Um, because I think I had some little guitar melody I had been doing and then JT kind of started doing his thing with a fiddle and we were like well it's a waltz let the let the fiddle you know have its place so yeah and a, a couple of more to mention is another one that I really really liked and it was just like I was driving down the road with y'all on Decatur like that one really warmed my heart coming from a small town and having to go through that situation myself and, and a lot of us that grew up in small towns that's another great song 
And Sean, if you want to say anything on about that, that's your song, brother. Uh, Decatur was a Decatur was a hard song to write um, because I I really I didn't want to write that song. Uh, I lost my uncle in February of last year, um, and I went to the funeral and I was around a lot of family I hadn't seen in a while. And my cousin, who was also he was a professional guitar player for a long time, he gifted me a Gibson acoustic guitar that was um it was it was very valuable um it was uh beautifully sound it was a beautiful sounding guitar it had been played by like you know he'd, he'd done jams with like Stoney LaRue and Joe Bonamassa and like Kevin Fowler Casey Donahue a lot of those guys had, had apparently from what he had said played that guitar mm-hmm. at like campfire jams and stuff and I took it home I gutted the electronics because they were all from the early 2000s and they weren't very solid anymore I replaced it with brand new pickup, brand new electronics, took it to gigs, and we took it out to a show in Marathon um, at the Gage Hotel, and someone had stolen that guitar. Um, and so we, they didn't take really any, anything else of our gear, it's just that one guitar. And uh, I remember kind of getting, that, that guitar was a way for me to kind of, you know, get over like losing a family member that was kind of a way for me to sort of help deal with it. And uh, I, I remember, I came back to work uh, immediately after we got back from that trip and I just was having a really hard time kind of, you know, sitting with, with everything that had happened and having somebody take something like that away from me. And in the process of that, I just remember thinking about that year and the experience of seeing my family and uh, losing my uncle. And, and I, I just wrote down what I wrote down, what my brother and I, like my mom and dad and I talked about while we were driving to, um, the funeral and like in the cemetery and just kind of while we had to drive from Austin all the way to um, like Iowa park and Wichita falls and then head back mm-hmm. down to mm-hmm. the Fort Worth area. So um, it was, it was, it just kind of happened in a way that I did. It, it's, and I think that's what a lot of what makes a lot of really great songs is you never want to have to live through something like that, but when you can kind of bottle it into a song, make some kind of art out of it, it, uh, it, it can it can turn into something beautiful if you let it mm, love that love which what how you just described that i just i just love everything y'all are saying so moving on i want to talk about it something that caught my attention also is your album art your covers and your single promo photos those are amazing what's the backstory on those <laughs> um well Recently, we've been working with a company called uh, The Creative Situation, and they're out of Fort Worth. Um, and so they've helped us come out with a, a bunch of the flyers that we've used. Um, the first four singles that we ever did um, came from a thank you card from a tattoo artist that I used. And it was he does a lot of traditional Americana style tattoos. And long story short, I had bought a bandana from him um, during COVID because they had, you know, all the tattoo shops had to shut down. So he sent me this postcard of this, this Americana girl and Sean saw it on my shelf and he's like, what is that? And I told him and he's like, that's the artwork for the first four singles. And I was like, cool. I love it. Um, and then when it came to the album, I mean, every one of us, we, we had a brainstorming session. Uh, JT was, the whole band was here and we sat here for like an hour, just talking about different themes you know that we see throughout the songs uh that are on the record because to us um you know the album artwork is is every bit as of importance as as the songs because you know we we grew up listening to a lot of old classic rock and stuff and those those album artworks are just so iconic and they stick in your head and we wanted to make sure we did something like that so um we had a big brainstorm session on that and then um, talked with our creative company and Sean, if you want to kind of finish on that kind of the direction we gave them and how we came about that. Um, when we thought back to album covers, like, you know, the Boston, like flying guitar, and like the electric light orchestra, um, like spaceship. And, you know, you look at, you look at kind of the theme of a lot of that classic rock, um, album artwork and we 
you know, we explain to them kind of the vibe of when you see the when you see the church that looks kind of like a bar. Like there's a there's a bar called Little Longhorn Saloon on Burnett in Austin, and we love that bar. We go hang out there all the time. We just we played a show there last Friday. Just you know, the, the owners have gotten to really like us, um, and we we really enjoy them. They're great people, <clears throat> and we mentioned dive bars in our songs. Like we talk about you know the atmosphere like baby doll we talk about uh the east the, the white horse saloon on the east side of austin right um this rowdy kind of fun rock and roll country atmosphere is i think very much part of the underbelly of what austin nightlife is and is becoming so we wanted an album we, we explained all that to uh, tcs and, and they they grabbed hold of it and they came up with something that really was reflective of of our brand and of, of what we're trying to do musically well, that, that y'all nailed it. They nailed it. I love how everything falls into place for y'all. So let's talk about your live shows. I know that y'all just played Green with Re- Reckless Kelly recently, correct? Yes. Yes, ma'am. And how did that go? I bet that was exciting. That was. And uh, JT, why, why don't you speak a little bit about your first at Green Hall? Because it was really interesting when we were talking about it. Uh, we we um, had knew about this for a few months leading up. So we all had our own <laughs> thoughts, but yeah um so like didn't grow up in texas but very quickly after getting here became very familiar with the places to play and where you want to go and and all the places to to go see in in the music scene and um, i had never been to green hall and that was on purpose because i wanted the first time that i went to green hall to be with a band that i played it so i could look the other way at the people oh, out wow. in, the, in the crowd instead of looking up wishing I was up on stage so um to just finally get to that point and be with a band that I love and you know finally you know I've always wanted to look for a band that's like the next Eagles and um where everybody you know like all of us are getting along and we're all becoming part of the songwriting process and just to have that become a reality at Green Hall and, and to really just kickstart where we're headed was was really just an awesome experience. And I couldn't have wished for anything better. It, it lived up to my expectations and, and to infinity and beyond. Gosh, what a great story. Y'all are awesome. And I know y'all have a lot ahead of you and I, I know we're fixing to start running short on time but any particular dream venue I mean Green Hall is Green Hall but is there any other place that it's like that we, this is where when we go play this it's going to be another one of those aha moments I mean Red Rocks um, I Sal and I have both said Sal and I have both said if we ever play uh, Red Rocks Moody Theater on 2nd Street in Austin or if we get on the bill for Austin City Limits Music Festival, um, you know, we can, if, if we wanted to, we could hang the whole thing up after that. Mm-hmm. Well, I think y'all are going to be busy for quite a long time. And again, the upcoming album Resurgence comes out um, August 28th, the current radio single, Everybody Take a Listen to Baby Doll. And where can everyone find you if they need to look up your website, social media? uh everything's the ransom brothers so okay www. that's easy the ransom brothers.com facebook and instagram are uh, at the ransom brothers okay well thank you so much guys and thanks for being patient with the little technical difficulties we had a few minutes ago but all good uh, i look for great things i'm going to be following your music and hopefully get, getting to a show and then um maybe we'll catch up shortly after the new album comes out i would love to do it again yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having absolutely. us. All right. Well, thank you, Sean, Sal, JT. Keep up the good work. It's the Ransom Brothers on the Texas Toast podcast. Cheers. Cheers. She knew where I was from as she left. I dare to say. record was tough for us to pick our singles mm-hmm. um corby shaw our producer he kept coming back to us over and over again he was like i this is a no skip he's okay. like this, he goes and you have no he told us he's like y'all have no idea how hard that is to do with a record if you have an album where every song is a heater 
Like that's not easy to do. So we told our, we told Jennifer Redding, our radio promoter. We told Heidi, our publicist, we told our other promoter, Bob, we were like, here's the album, pick what you like. And they were like, and we got different answers every time. 